All right guys, we're back in my garage for another video. And today we're going to be talking about exactly how much I've spent building my Big Turbo 440i. A lot of you guys have seen the different modifications I've done to the car and you frequently ask, you know, how much different parts cost or just overall how much I've invested. So in this video, we'll cover every single part that I've done and hopefully this answers all the questions you have or at least you find this somewhat entertaining just to see how much I've actually dumped into this build. Now, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. All right, so I've got my laptop here. All the numbers are in front of me. This is usually an exercise that we don't like to do because ultimately it's going to show that I spent way too much money on the car. But I still was just kind of curious, you know, how much total I've invested. So the way that I'm going to do this is start from the day that I got the car all the way up to the current date and just tell the whole story, all the parts that I put on it and how much they all cost. Now, something that you guys have to realize is I am extremely cheap, even though you see my car and it looks like it's significantly modified and I've spent a whole lot of money on it. In the grand scheme of things, I really don't like to spend money unless I'm getting a really good deal. And on top of that, when I ordered my car, my son was on the way. He was actually born three weeks after I picked the car up. So with that in mind, I basically just decided that unless I saw a deal that was basically too good to pass up, I wasn't going to spend money on the car. If it was cheap or just something that was like an extremely good deal, then I would feel okay jumping on it, but nothing that made me feel like I had to stretch just to make something happen. So with that in mind, I will tell you guys different parts that I bought used and how much I paid for those. Doesn't necessarily mean that I got a good deal or a bad deal or that's like, any kind of benchmark for how you should be, you know, paying for parts in this market, but it's just how much I paid. I'll tell you guys if I got it on a significant discount. So if it was Black Friday or some kind of introductory sale, I can tell you that as well. The only thing that I can't share is, of course, I have several companies that have partnered with me on my build. Usually they extend discounts on their parts in return for, you know, creating content, DIYs and product reviews and things like that. So I can't actually share the discounts that they gave me. For those parts, we'll just use the MSRP price. And I will also tell you guys the parts that I've sold because I've actually done a really good job of selling most of the stock parts that I've taken off the car just to recoup some of the cost and you know minimize how much out-of-pocket expense I have. All right, so let's go ahead and start from day one. So I actually ordered my car brand new. It's a 2018 440i. It is rear-wheel drive with the manual transmission. And it has the M Sport package, the executive package, and the digital cluster. So not too crazy of a build, no like individual colors or anything. The MSRP was right around $57,000, and I was able to buy it for $51,000. So I got about $6,000 off. I didn't do any crazy negotiating for this. I basically just sent my build sheet out to a bunch of different dealers and gave my business to the one that gave me the best deal I didn't feel good about making different salesmen like compete against each other. And I really don't feel like doing that anyway. You know, so whoever stretched the farthest to make a good deal happen for me, that's the guy that got my business. So I went with him. Actually, it was a dealer out in California. So instead of going there to pick it up, I just picked it up at the Performance Center in South Carolina and drove the car home. So once I got it home, I had a couple parts waiting to install. The first thing that I installed were some dual slat grills. I got these from eBay. I know the OEM ones are really clean, but I wanted something with no badge on it. So I didn't want an actual like M3 or M4 grill. And also these were just super cheap, even though it's not perfect quality. It looks good enough to me. Still looks good after five years. So those were $73. And then I also got the painted reflectors again to help clean up the front end. These just are really key to making your car look good, in my opinion. So I bought the IND painted reflectors for $84, and those retail for around $130, so that seemed like a good deal at the time as well. After that, I debadged the rear. That was completely free. You know, you just kind of use some floss, pop the numbers off. But yes, I did that literally as soon as I got the car home because I just don't like the look of it with the numbers in the back. And then after that, I got my car protected. So I went to a local shop. And I got my window tint done as well as my clear bra. I did all four windows all the way around. And then I have an Expel clear bra up to one third of the hood and the fenders as well as the mirror and the whole front bumper. I feel like I got a pretty good deal on that. I paid $850 for everything. At the time, it was well over $1,000 and I actually started backing out 
of some of my plans because of how expensive it was. And one of the companies that I was talking to decided just to give me a really good package deal since they knew I was going to have everything ready and it was going to be a brand new car that didn't really need a whole lot of prep and stuff like that. So that's the deal that I went with. Still very happy with the performance. No rock chips on my car whatsoever. So works really well. Now, like I said, a couple weeks after I got the car, my son was born and I actually had a clutch stop delivered while my wife was in labor. So those are only $10. You can get them on eBay. The original designer sells them on eBay and you can find them really easily because if you search, you know, F30 clutch stop, it's got like 3000 units sold or something. So he's been selling them for a long time, but bought that, asked my wife if I could take a little break and went downstairs in the garage and installed those really quick. So yeah, definitely highly recommend that for my manual guys. It's really cheap and it's just something that helps eliminate some of that clutch pedal travel. Now after this, my priorities were making the car a little bit lower and a little bit louder. So first thing I was looking for were some H&R Super Sport Springs. I actually found a set for 100 bucks. Typically they go for like 150 to 200 but it was somebody that was looking for a quick sale. I just happened to see his post on Facebook first, sent him the PayPal money, and got that delivered. I ended up selling those for $175, so I made a little bit of money there. After that, uh, a couple weeks later, I got my muffler delete done. So that was just a really cheap way to get a little bit more noise out of the car. Even the mid pipes are like over 500 bucks. So again, just me being cheap, I went the muffler delete route and that cost around $200. And then I also added a Hemholtz resonator and I got that welded onto the car for another $100. That didn't really make a huge difference, but it's still on the car. So we'll just add that on here anyway. Now, unfortunately, at this time, I determined that the car was not low enough. So I started looking out for coilovers and I found KWV1 coilovers for $550. Now I know this sounds ridiculous, but what ended up happening was I found some money on the forums that had a set of F31 X-Drive coilovers. So these were specifically designed for an all-wheel drive four-cylinder wagon. And he had been dropping the price for a while because not a lot of people have those cars. And he had just had it in his garage, was trying to move it. And I told him for that price, I'm willing to take the risk. I feel like it'll fit my car. They fit perfectly. I think the only difference with these is the rear springs are a little bit stiffer for, you know, the hatch on the wagons to kind of help hold them up. So I pulled out a little bit of stuff to help drop the rear a little bit more. And same deal here. I've had it on for going on four and a half years. No issues. Now those retail for over 1600 bucks. So again, at that kind of deal, I just couldn't pass it up. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend KWV ones, especially if you can find a good deal on them definitely go that route. Now after the car was lowered I started looking for some spacers or something for the stock wheels but I wasn't really sure if I wanted to spend money on that instead of getting actual wheels and I learned about this website called Zen Market and Zen Market is a website where you can basically buy stuff from the Japanese eBay and they sell all kinds of you know Yu-Gi-Oh cards and different like comic books and figurines and stuff but also they sell Japanese wheels. And so I've had a dream of owning some Volk Racing wheels for a long time. And I just happened to stumble upon the perfect spec ZE40 wheels. So these are basically my dream wheels. They were $2,100. They retail for about $3,800. So again, I just couldn't pass up on that. Jumped on it, got them shipped over. Also mounted some Continental tires on there for $750. And put everything together. And at this point, the car was perfect. I had no complaints about it. It looked perfect, drove great, you know, it was a little bit slow, but I wasn't hell-bent on making more power, and I didn't want to do a piggyback, so I just kind of was enjoying the car at the time. But, a couple months later, Mission Performance unlocked the DME, then MG Flasher started putting out flashes, and then finally Boot Mode was released, and that's the one that I was kind of waiting on. So, when it was released, I wasn't really sure if I was going to pull the trigger, but again, they had an introductory sale... I felt like I probably won't see this deal again. I didn't really see the tunes going on sale that often. So I actually jumped on board and got the license for 530 bucks. Great deal for me at the time. It retailed for 600 Bought the Stage 193 Octane tune and went back to enjoying the car. I also did a couple other things that year. So I got some camber plates from Millway. I spent $380 on those. Those just helped give me a little bit more clearance to allow me to go lower on the car without rubbing. And then I also ceramic coated the car. I did the ceramic coating myself. So that only cost me $70 for the Secords UK 3.0 ceramic coating. Then I also got some Euro Blackline LED taillights, 
when I saw this announced, I wasn't really sure if this was going to work, but I specifically wanted the European versions because I was guessing that those flashed yellow since, you know, the European regulations require amber turn signals. So I found a website in Germany that sold those. They were $850. And then I went around and sold my stock taillights that are the US spec LED taillights for 700 bucks. So basically 150 bucks out of pocket for me to get those. So that seemed like a really good deal as well. So again, back enjoying the car. Everything's perfect. Raced a bunch of people, won a bunch of races, raced one guy and lost. So that meant that I needed to start looking to see if I could get more power out of the car. Now, at this point, people started talking about an OEM high pressure fuel pump upgrade that could allow us to get past our fuel cap limits. And so I found out it was probably the TU pump. Went ahead, found one in Germany that was for sale used. It was $650. At the time, that was a really good deal because they were about $1,000 new. So I went ahead and bought that one. It was used, got it shipped over from Germany. And then I also went ahead and got my 550i clutch. That was $330. Pretty good deal. And I did the service myself, so I didn't have to pay any labor. So again, I just kind of jumped on with that. I added a flex fuel sensor. This kit I actually built myself for about a hundred bucks with components that I bought from Amazon and different fittings. So it only cost me a hundred dollars. And then I pulled the trigger on an E85 tune. I actually bought this on Black Friday from F80 Paul. So at the time with his discounts and everything, it was 425 bucks. I think his tunes are now like $600. So a little bit more expensive, but um, you know, it was just something that we wanted to try because not a lot of people had dialed in the TU high pressure fuel pumps. We didn't really know what was going to be required. So at that point, my only option was to go with a custom tune. After we started tuning, we thought it would be a good idea to get a catless downpipe. In my mind, I thought I was going to do everything on the stock downpipe, but it quickly seemed like we were going to be pushing it a little bit too hard. So I got a catless downpipe from VRSF for 175 bucks. Bought that used on the forums as well. Now that summer, I actually got an M Performance style diffuser. I was actually hell bent on keeping the body completely stock on the car, but I found a good deal. It was 90 bucks. Somebody was selling it used and just didn't want to have to ship it because of the size. So I was able to get a good deal on it just to pick it up myself. So got that, put it on the car. And then I also did front control arms and tie rods. This is something, again, I was kind of just keeping an eye out on it, but because it was kind of expensive, I didn't want to pull the trigger yet. And then I saw all the pricing increased, like on SPL's site and a bunch of other sites except for one that still had the original pricing. And when I noticed what was going on, I just bought them from that site. I figured at the worst case, you know, I could sell them new and get my money back. But because I was able to get them at the original price, I went ahead and pulled the trigger on those. So the front control arms were $500. And the tie rods were 250 bucks. A little later on, while we were dialing in the tune, I started noticing IITs were getting kind of high in the summer. So I started trying different things to see if I could reduce those. So the first thing I did was I bought a Dyn and Cold Air intake. I spent 350 bucks on that, tested it, had no improvement. So I sold it for 350 bucks. After that, I bought the CSF heat exchanger. A lot of you have seen that video already. At the time, I bought it for $485. I'm pretty sure that was on sale. I can't remember what the retail is, but I pulled the trigger on that from a website I found and had the full package with the rock guard and everything. So even though it didn't provide a huge improvement, I felt like the rock guard was a nice thing just to keep the front of the car safe and prevent coolant leaks. And again, we're back enjoying the car. So that was the end of summer going into fall. Same thing, did a bunch of races, won a bunch of races, raced one guy and lost. So now we're back to the drawing board looking for more power. And that's when I decided to pull the trigger on the Dock Race Turbo Kit. Now, this kit had been coming throughout the summer and the fall. They had been teasing about it. And I finally pulled the trigger on it right before Christmas. This was a sponsored part, so I'm not going to share the actual price that I paid. But at the time, the kit retailed with the turbo option for $5,500. So I went ahead and put that on. Again, at the time, I still had the TU pump. Very simple DI-only setup. I just kind of wanted the turbo to help, you know, eat up the higher RPMs. And at the time, it worked really well. I put a tune on there on an ethanol mix. You guys saw we made between 550 and 600 wheel horsepower pretty consistently. So the turbo was doing work, but eventually it was time to push for a little bit more. 
So I got a Dort Stage 1 and a Dort Stage 2 high pressure fuel pump from Keys Motorsports. The Dort Stage 1 is $1,200. The Dort Stage 2 is $1,700. I didn't keep the Dort Stage 1 because, of course, the Dort Stage 2 actually supported my power goals. But, you know, the Stage 1 was also a part of the build process. So we'll put that in there as well. Then I finally pulled the trigger on a front lip. The way that I am, I knew that it was going to get destroyed really quickly. So I had been kind of avoiding it, even though I thought they looked good. But again, I partnered with Keys Motorsports as a new sponsor, and they extended a discount to me on the front lip. It actually retails at $288. So I felt like regardless, it's not too expensive of a part. I definitely didn't want the carbon fiber one because I knew that would just break and it's more expensive. So I just got the cheaper plastic one. Later that year, I also partnered with Blackview and got a DR900X two-channel dash cam. It has nothing to do with power or performance, but it does have to do with safety of your car. Highly recommend it to anybody that's watching. The DR900X is $480. And then next, I also installed the Paradigm Engineering oil filter housing. And the opposite of the dash cam, this actually is extremely critical to making big power. It added about 300 horsepower to my car, and it was only $100, so... Definitely go get your oil filter housing ASAP. Later on that year, Ross Racing released their PCV VTA kit. So he partnered with me as well to help create my DIYs and a couple videos for you. The VTA kit that I'm using, it's just the cheapest one with no catch can or anything. And it's $300. Then of course this spring, you guys saw my most recent power modification to upgrade my fuel system was I added port injection. So I got a Precision Raceworks port injection plate as well as a Motive Reflex controller. The port injection plate was $1,200 and the reflex was $700. So about $1,900 to add on a little bit extra fuel up top, allow me to run, you know, around 650 wheel horsepower on full E85. Should be about there as it sits right now. And yeah, I think the car is in a really happy place. I also, of course, added the heat shield. That's not 100% necessary, but it was $376 through ATP. So... That's everything together. Let's see what the total cost is. That's a big number. That's a really big number. Now, there is one thing that I want to add on because I have sold a lot of parts. Okay. I sold everything from my stock turbo, my stock intake. I sold my stock charge pipe. I sold my stock suspension. I sold my stock muffler. All of the stock components except for like my kidney grills, my reflectors, and my stock high-pressure fuel pump. I've got almost everything else sold on my car. So let's see all of that costs. See my stock wheels, everything added in. That's a nice number, too. That's a nice number, too. At least that brings me under 20 grand. <laughs> so I guess here's the total cost of how much I spent. Minus how much I saved from selling stock parts or selling parts that I took off of the car. This is the total price of everything. You know, it is what it is. I definitely could have bought an M3. I'm happy I don't have one, to be completely honest. I much rather would have a modified version of my car than a stock version of a more expensive car. At least at this point in my life, you know, that could definitely change in the future. But, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying where the car is. And that's another reason why I wanted to make this video, because I don't plan on doing a whole lot more in the future. Where the car is, it is extremely happy. It's extremely consistent. The fuel system can keep up. Nothing is overstressed out. So I really just want to enjoy the car. Now, I will say, of course, if you want to rebuild a car that is at my power level, you definitely don't have to go the route that I did. You definitely don't have to spend as much as I did. There are a lot of cheaper turbos that can make similar amounts of power. There are a lot of different setups that you can do that'll prioritize performance, whereas I tried to blend performance and looks to, you know, my specific taste. But, you know, it is what it is. I think in the long run, it's not going to matter. I'm not building my car to sell it in the future or anything like that. I really just want to enjoy it the way that it is. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on everything that I've gone through, you know, the whole story of Kern modifying his 440i. Maybe it gives you guys a little bit of ideas on what you might want to do to your car. And if you have any questions about it, let me know. If you think I should have got a better deal somewhere, feel free to let me know that I'm stupid and I overpaid. But overall, I think that I've done pretty good with this car. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. 
And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.